Hello, hi. Uh, first of all, I'm very excited to be here today. It's my first time in uh, Slash and the first time in Helsinki. And you seem like an amazing crowd, so thank you for coming. So I would like to start my speech with two uh, non-traditional questions. The first one is how many of you ever visited inside of a wave energy power station? Raise your hand. One, two. That's more than in, than in the usual conferences, so two people. OK, a different question. How many of you ever participated in a game of Texas Hold'em poker? Almost everybody. Very good. So one night, I, was, I couldn't sleep, and I was playing with my phone with the Zynga Texas Hold'em Poker application, and I got curious. I was curious what are the worst starting cards in Texas Hold'em Poker. I found out it's a two and a seven. Two and a seven were always a repeating motif throughout my life. But let's start from the beginning. I was born on the 11th of April, 1986 in a small town in Ukraine called Cherkasy, which is not so conveniently located only 200 miles away from Chernobyl. Two weeks after I was born, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor exploded, causing the biggest in history nuclear disaster in terms of cost and casualties. One day, my mom approached my crib. She looked down at me, and she saw her baby's pale, blue, not breathing, no pulse. I was actually clinically deaf, dead. So luckily, my mom was a nurse, so she gave me a mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, which saved my life. That moment was the beginning of my passion towards renewable energy, and later in life, one of the key reasons for establishing EcoWave Power. But the beginning of EcoWave Power was also a two and a seven. In 2011, when David Lab, my partner, and I established EcoWave Power, Wave Energy had a very, very bad reputation. Investment companies, banks, engineering companies invested billions of dollars in Wave Energy in very small Wave Energy power stations that would break after two or three days of operation. Everybody decided to stay away. On top of everything, I established the company when I was only 24 years old, which is much younger than my peers in the wave energy industry. I didn't have any technical background. I studied actually political science and English language and literature, and Shakespeare didn't help me too much in constructing power stations, unfortunately. And I was a female in a mostly male-dominated industry. Most of the times when I came to a conference room about to pitch my amazing wave energy technology. People would go, espresso, please, coffee. Everybody assumed that I'm somebody's secretary. Even the statistics were not on my side. Uh, the Marker magazine, which is one of the biggest financial magazines in Israel, actually published a survey according, with a title that is saying, why female startup founders cannot raise funds. Apparently, according to their sur survey, in the years 2014 till 2017, only 10% of the startups in Israel were established by women. Out of them, only 20 women in our Israeli startup nations, nation were able to raise round A funding. And zero women were able to reach a second fundraising round. So I didn't have any technical information. Wave Energy had a very bad reputation. And the worst part, apparently, I was a woman, and we don't know how to raise funds. So I didn't have an easy start. Most people with this kind of start would decide to fold their cards. But I decided to keep playing. I decided to invest my passion and my time in the wave energy field because I knew some very important things about the sector. First of all, two thirds of the world population are currently living on the coastline. With this kind of population distribution, the need for wave energy is inevitable. Other than that, in many countries, you can produce wave energy around the clock. As opposed to solar, when the sun goes down at night, when you have pollution, like in China, that hides the sun, or when you have uh, the winter, when it's cloudy and you can't produce any electricity, in many places, wave energy keeps operating all the time. 
Also, the density of water is 1,000 times greater than the density of air, which means you can produce much larger electricity amounts with much smaller devices. Our technology was very simple and different than, than uh, the technologies that existed in our field back then when we started the company. We basically decided to install the technology onshore or nearshore, where most of the companies, they went four or five kilometers into the sea, which was very expensive. You need underwater mooring, you need the divers, you need the chips. What we did, as we can see in the presentation, we basically came up with unique floater shapes that connect to any type of breakwater or any type of other ocean structure. The floaters are going up and down, pushing hydro cylinders that are creating pressure in land-located accumulators. This pressure is used to turn a hydro motor, turn a generator, and easily send clean electricity into the grid. For the first time, our technology was cost efficient because obviously it does not cost a lot of money to connect uh, floaters to a breakwater. It costs only $1 million per one megawatt. Uh, it's reliable. The technology comes with storm protection mechanisms. Every time there is upcoming storm, the floaters raise above the water level or submerge under the water level until the storm passes. The technology is the first wave energy technology that is fully insurable. And it's 100% environmentally friendly because we do not create a new presence on the ocean floor. We do not connect to the ocean floor. We just connect to man-made existing structures. So we, made for a long journey. we went for a long journey. We started testing in the Hydromechanical Institute in Kiev. Uh, when the testing was successful, we enlarged it to a 10 kilowatt power station, which is around 10 households in the port of Jaffa, which is operational already for three years. And we opened our first commercial scale power station of 100 kilowatt in Gibraltar a year ago. This power plant will be expanded to a full size of 5 megawatt and provide 15% of all Gibraltar's electricity needs. The next power station that we will be constructing is in the port of Manzanillo in Mexico. It will be actually a 4 megawatt station with 300 floaters, and it will be the biggest one that is built in the wave energy sector so far. At the moment, our company holds a project pipeline of 130 megawatts in countries like Mexico, Chile, China, the UK, Israel, Cyprus, and others. But let's go back to poker. So with all the information that I gave you about wave energy and the advantages of our technology, I think you agree with me that we have at least two pairs of twos and a seven, which is not an amazing hand, but it is not a bad hand. So all depends in the last card that will open up for us. So if the last card, the river, is a lucky seven, then we can win the game with the full house. But if the last card is something else, we can also lose the game. So what's the difference? the difference between poker and wave energy. In poker, the last card is solely dependent on luck. In wave energy and the protection of our environment, the last card is dependent on us. So we can decide the future of the planet. So why am I here today? I'm here today because of three main reasons. The first reason, I want to defy statistics about wave energy. I want to show that it can be easy, it can be cheap, it can be commercially viable, and that wave energy is an important resource that is worth your attention. Because wave energy can produce twice the amount of electricity that the world produces now. The second thing, I would like to defy the statistics about female entrepreneurs. Echo Wave Power, my company, raised its first fundraising round two years ago and we raised our second fundraising round in April this year. So there are no longer zero women in Israel that raised the second fundraising round. Thank you. <laughs> our company plans to go public on the Australian Stock Exchange in the middle of 2018, which will be a very exciting step for the wave energy, for female entrepreneurs and for all of, all of us. I would like to stand here and ask you that we, as a society, let future female entrepreneurs to start with cards that are much better than a two and a seven. Because definitely women should be an important part of the business community. We can raise funds, we can do everything. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you.
You're a very good crowd, I have to say. Very supporting. <laughs> and the last message and the most important message that I would like to convey today is if, even if you start your company or your idea with cards that are considered very bad, like a two and a seven, it does not mean that this is the end of the game for you. With passion and with commitment, you can have amazing results because passion is the greatest renewable energy source. Thank you very much. Thank you.